Hey guys, Bo here at KG5 Media. I'm here with former fast bowler and cap number 161 here for Glenorchy, Mike Gandy. First off, Mike, thanks for being here. That's my pleasure. So, for our 90 year celebration, we thought it'd be great to get Mike in because he's such a, a well known player here and he's actually a historian and works at the Cricket Taz Museum, so he could help us out with some uh, history. He actually played for Tasmania, cap number 339. Uh, Mark, do you want to tell us how you ended up here with Glenorchy? Oh, well, I was always going to be a Glenorchy cricketer. Um, Mum and Dad lived up uh, in Windsor Street, which overlooked Edie Street. And I would walk to school at Glenorchy State School, down the hill, over Edie Street to, to the school and back again. And on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'd have cricket practice and I'd be running around chasing balls and watching people like Emerson Robble and Lloydie Smith etc etc so I was always going to play there but it wasn't until 1959 I got a chance to play schoolboys with Glenorchy and that was a, that was my first introduction to play cricket there and we won the schoolboys title that year. So obviously I mentioned that you're a fast bowler is there anything else that you've done for the club during your, your time? Oh look I was I was secretary for a number of years um, um, I didn't play with Glenorchy um, um, until 1968-69. My employment took me in other places. So I, after that initial year playing with schoolboys, another 10 years passed before I could play with Glenorchy again. By that time I was married, living at Austin's Ferry, um, and I was able to play with my, uh, my original club. And after a year or two, I became secretary because I was pretty keen in administration. In fact, I think probably if I had the time all over again, I would be better off to have practiced cricket rather than use an excuse. I'm the secretary and I need to do things inside the club rooms. Um, but I was at Glenorchy for, uh, until 1975. I was transferred into state and, uh, and that was the end of my association with Glenorchy. So you've mentioned Emerson Rodwell. Who are some of the other players, who are some of the best players that you've played with? Oh, look at Glenorchy. Um, look, I, no, I, I say that Michael Highland, um, BJ Highland, uh, was the most uh, credible batsman I'd played with. Um, and Brian Patterson, no, Brian Richardson, who came along um, uh, for, a, for a few years, he was, he was a, an excellent, excellent batsman. Um, as far as bowls concerned, I. I opened bowling with a number of a number of guys, uh, Mickey Rodwell, um, Tony Davidson, um, to, to mention two that we, we were, we were uh, good combinations. Kel Coburn with his leggies was another very, very good player. So we've just spoke about some of the best players you've played with. Who are some of the best you've played against? Um, Brian Patterson never played for Australia. Brian Patterson, if he'd played his cricket on the mainland, would have been a shoe in to play for Australia. He was a cricketer like Derek Underwood in England, um, but because he was a Tasmanian, he missed out. And there was one year, I think it was probably in the 50s, when a Victorian fellow called Quirk was picked to play for Australia. Pat was far better than what he was. Um, an Englishman that was in the Tasmania for a little while, John Hampshire was an extraordinary batsman um, and it was a joy to play uh, uh, with him in, in the uh, Tasmanian, in the Southern Tasmanian team and Tasmania as well. Um, but uh, it, was, it was a hard man to get out but he was great to watch bat. And of the bowlers, I can't place anybody better than Les Appleton. Les, Les had a terrific amount of speed um, and uh, he was a dynamic cricketer for North Hobart. So tell us about some of your memorable moments here at Glenorchy. Ah, ah, there were plenty of those, but no, look, my magic moment was playing in a, in a one-day one day final up at the TCA and uh, we were in all sorts of trouble and um, uh, my, Mickey Robwell and I had put on a few runs. And I was batting at number 10 and Horsey Gordon came in at number 11. I think we still needed 20 uh, to win the match. and. Brent Dorfman bowled a couple to me and I hit him out of the ground 
and uh, then I hit a four in the last over and we won the match, which I think got um, um, Bill Murray off the toilet to come out and watch the game, but it was quite an exciting thing for us to come back from the death to win that particular match, and uh, I'll always remember that occasion. So tell us a funny story from your time playing cricket. Ah, I mentioned Brian Richardson before. When he came to Gnorky as our coach, it was a Thursday night early in the piece and uh, he gathered all the players together and he told us that things were going to change at Edie Street. No longer, after cricket practice on a Thursday night and selection, we would have a couple of drinks and then we'd go home. We'd be home early. I think his wife Margaret heard him crawl into the door of their house out at uh, Rosetta at around about three o'clock the next morning. I can tell you, Nothing changed. <laughs> so what's changed since your playing days? Oh yeah, look, it's uh, you know, I still umpire, so I'm 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 with the scene. Um, but uh, I think the biggest changes have been the professionalism, um, uh, the way in which players uh, commit themselves to play, the time that they practice, um, the way they go about practicing, um, uh, the hours they play. Um, but to, and, and in addition to that, the fact that we no longer have district cricket, we've got club cricket, which makes, a, makes a, the, the emphasis more on the club to keep the players. Um, and, uh, and I think that's, uh, that's been an excellent, excellent introduction. That came in around about, I don't know, 60 years ago, 50 or 60 years ago. So obviously everybody enjoys it, but uh, that's probably, they're probably the major changes that I've seen. So I forgot to mention earlier in the piece that Mike was a cricket tad or still is a cricket Tasmania board member. What are some of the, the big decisions that you've had a say on for? I'm, I'm, I'm no longer a board member. After 15 years, I retired. I was retired five years ago. So uh, um, I started in 2000. So I've been part of that fabulous change that we've seen at Bill Reeve. Um, I must say though, I've never really been keen that Bill Reeve was the place they should have built but anyway that's where we are um, so I've been through the development stages and and in particular I was involved in the museum um, and the establishment of the museum and, uh, and I think that it's been a great ride and of course Tasmania was successful we've had a great ride in the in the uh, 2000s winning um, Sheffield Shield and one day titles and to be a part of that has, has, has been terrific um, I've also been part of um, uh, the naming process of things, like the, the, uh, the field of fame is one of my babies, but I think probably the one that uh, I've enjoyed more than anything else is the fact that the, the, uh, the grey cricket of the year is named after Emerson Rodwell, and that was one of my babies. I was, I was so proud that Emerson was given that, uh, was given that name. Alright, so what's your nickname? Ah, well if you, if you know about Mahatma Gandhi, um, uh, only you young people probably wouldn't know, but uh, Mahatma Gandhi was a famous Indian, uh, and so I used to call Mahatma. Junior Cricket Club? Oh, Gnorky was always my junior club, living, as I said, uh, up on top of Windsor Street. Um, Gnorky was down below. And uh, I must say, too, you know, that you know, Gnorky's greatest period was in the 50s. And here I am, you know, um, born in 1944, in the 50s, I'm 10, 12. Um, very appreciable of, of what goes on. And Gnorky was the greatest thing since sliced bread, it really was. Yeah. Everybody wanted to play with Gnorky. <laughs> Favourite cricketer? Um, look, that's a hard one. Um, I reckon Ricky Ponting, uh, stay, home, stay at home, Tasmania. Ricky Ponting is, 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 was always my favourite cricketer. Um, and um, yeah, you've got you to gotta support your own Tasmanians. Famous person you'd invite over to dinner? Oh, well, Richie Beno was uh, still around the place. I'd have Richie uh, as my guest at home. Um, and uh, he's, he, was, he was certainly a great cricketer and a great commentator. What's your hidden talent? Oh, look, I know it's hidden or not. I've, I've, um, I've, I've, just, I've got a bit of a name now as a, as a researcher. I, I, I think I've, I've written more about cricket cricket in Tasmania than anybody um, and I've written a couple of books including 
the history of Tasmanian cricket uh, called Tiger's Roar. Um, and uh, I've got a passion, I've got a passion for journalism and I, I put a newsletter together for the Australian Cricket Society every month and I've done that for 30 years and uh, uh, some days I'm probably going to stop and I've got to find someone to take it over. And what did you love about Glenorchy during your playing days or, or even now? Oh uh, yeah, I, 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 it's hard to put down here. Yeah, you grow up with a bunch of guys and um, and and you share your joys. Um, you know, win, winning matches, winning cricket, winning sport is what it's all about. Uh, I grew up at Glenorchy at a time um, uh, when uh, we're all much the same age. We're all in our mid twenties or thereabouts. We all had children. Our wives would come along and do afternoon tea. Um, our kids would play uh, together. And, uh, and I guess, yeah, we grew old together. So guys, I'd just like to thank Mike for taking his time out of his day to, I guess, help us with our 90 year celebration. So Mike, thank you very much for being here and opening us, uh, opening it up to us. Thank you very much, I appreciate it.